Hi everyone and welcome back to Advanced Cyber Biology. Today we're continuing with Unit 1 and we're on Key Area 4, Communication and Signalling. This fairly short video is going to be on the second sub-key area, Part B, Hydrophobic Signals and the Control of Transcription. So this builds off with 4A when we look at how molecules can cross the cell membrane and we're going to look at the effect these have. So, first of all, for hydrophobic molecules. So, hydrophobic, you may remember from earlier in this unit, these are non-polar. Now, hydrophobic signaling molecules, you can tell if they're hydrophobic or not because these molecules are able to diffuse directly through the plasma membrane. They go straight through the phospholipid bilayers, they pass right into the cell, into an intracellular area. They do not need to bind to some form of transport protein and get put across. So these hydrophobic signal molecules diffuse directly through and they're going to bind to receptors inside the cell and these receptors are called transcription factors. So like this diagram just showing here, straight through, binding to a transcription factor. Now transcription factors themselves, you also need a definition. These are all proteins that are going to or have the ability to bind to DNA and as the name suggests of transcription factors, they are going to either stimulate or inhibit the initiation of transcription. So the idea of this protein is going to bind to DNA and it's either going to start the process of DNA converting to mRNA or it's going to halt that process or stop it from happening entirely. Now, some examples of these, essentially any form of steroid hormones are hydrophobic signaling molecules. So estrogen and testosterone, for example, are ones that you do need to know. Uh, they as the name suggests, will pass through the plasma membrane. They're going to bind to a transcription factor and have an impact on uh, transcription itself. These steroid hormones are going to bind to specific receptors, either in the cytosol of the cell or potentially the nucleus itself. When this takes place, though, that hormone is going to bind to the receptor to form a hormone receptor complex, just meaning they're both bound together. And that is going to move to the nucleus Obviously, where transcription takes place in itself, and it's going to bind to specific sites in DNA, which in turn is going to affect gene expression. That's the, the whole impact of these hydrophobic signaling molecules. Now, these hormone receptor complexes, as I said, they're going to bind to specific DNA sequences or parts of DNA. These areas are called hormone response elements, or you might see it referred to as HREs. So what's going to happen is if you bind to an HRE, then that's going to influence the rate of transcription, but each steroid hormone is going to affect the gene expression of many different genes. It's not just one set process that's going to take place. So you need to be very aware of hydrophobic signaling. You need to know a couple of examples. You need to know that they bind to receptor, uh, intracellular receptors called transcription factors. What do they do? And also these areas of the DNA sequences where the hormone receptor complex binds are called hormone response elements. And that's all for that one. Just bear in mind that that is hydrophobic. And as we go on to part C, we're going to be looking at the difference between hydrophilic signaling molecules, what they do, and how they differ in their function. So that is all for 4B, and I'll see you for a slightly longer and slightly more complicated 4C hydrophobic, or sorry, hydrophilic signaling and transduction. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.